Danielle Weber is a hustler. But I used to think it was 50-50, 50% talent, 50% working hard. However, now I have 70% hard work, 30% talent. She's a Melbourne artist that has built a name for herself through her dazzling paintings and murals. <laughs> Working with brands such as Jordan, she's also caught the attention of one of the world's most iconic sporting teams, the New York Yankees. Today, we discuss Danielle's journey, her relationship with The Rock, and much more. Hey, my name's Danielle Weber, and I'm hanging out with Rush. Let's go, Rush! What's up guys, I'm your host Rush. Today's guest is Daniel Weber. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thanks for having me. <laughs> Firstly, congratulations on all your incredible work. I've seen it popping up a lot on my social media the last two years, so it's nice to have you here and have a chat today. Finally, we got there. <laughs> when did you first start trusting and believing that you could make a living from art? Ooh, that's a good question. I think there was a few like pivotal moments um, along the way, meeting a few like significant people in the world that you're like, oh, okay, why did they stop and, and recognize my work? But I, I do believe as much as like, yeah, the last two years have been like really, really good and consistent. And um, I feel like I've sort of started making moves or bigger moves. Um, I, still, I still believe like there is always that like underlying doubt. It's like, oh, what am I gonna do now? Like even these last few weeks and um, stopping in Bali, I'm sort of like, okay, can we still do it? How, where, what shift are we going to make? What, what, what's, what next for me? So, um, look, I think by the time I'd finished uni, which was, um, oh geez, five, five, six years ago now, however long it was, uh, I knew that it was something I would never give up on making a living out of it. Um, but it's definitely a work in progress, constant work in progress. And when you meet someone for the first time and they ask like, what do you do? Yeah. How do you describe yourself? It's so funny because I, I say an artist, like, oh, I'm, I'm a full-time artist, but I still struggle to say it. So I'm just like, oh, I just paint. Like, and they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, oh, I'm an artist. Like, I, what kind of art? And then I still struggle to sort of explain what I do, which is, um, which is very much, it's funny, I'd like to be a fly on the wall. It, depending on like how I'm feeling that day and where I am, you know, in projects and things like that, it probably, I probably respond differently to everyone. So do you describe yourself more so as a painter? Is that how you would put it? Yeah, well, cause like when I'm like, oh, I'm an artist, everyone's kind of like, oh, well, how or like what, what kind of art and like what like it's your job so i'm just like oh i kind of just like paint stuff and they're like what do you mean and i'm like oh i paint murals or and canvases um so yeah i'm, I'm not very like confident in giving it what a direct answer definitely in your opinion what what do you think makes a, a good artist or a good painter i mean for me i look at other artists um and as much as i'm like so proud where i am in in my journey i look at other artists who have their style and their like real niche and like i look at their work and i'm like you're a genius and i think that's what makes a really really cool and really good artist is that they connect with people with like purely their work and their work only uh, for me my art has been more so learning through storytelling about other people's journeys and connecting to my audience like that but I look at other artists and I'm just like wow I want to get to a stage where I'm like that is my style and I really you know I know I know I've like imprinted my my work so the way I came across your work was on social media I saw yeah. this huge Muhammad Ali piece that I absolutely loved yeah some of the pieces that you do are huge. Do you want to explain like the scale of some of these? Yeah, I mean, for the Aussie listeners, they'll probably get in terms of in, in terms of meters. Um, I think the biggest mural I've done is 400 square meters. So it's sort of like if you can picture a side of a stadium or a side of a building or some really high walls, a lot of houses and gyms and um, bigger projects on buildings and, and infrastructures. I'm quite little, so I do make my work look very big. And so how do you get into doing murals? Like, is that quite a tricky industry to, to tap into? It's definitely a tricky industry to tap into more so because I feel like there's no way you can really go to learn how to do murals. Uh, I just got asked to do murals like often and I was too scared to say yes so it was a classic case of like no too hard basket I can't do it 
and um, sure enough, you know, people were quite persistent and I sort of just fell into it in terms of like my work evolved, got a little bit bigger on canvases and then I made the choice to brave murals and I really just learnt as I went along, um, basically practicing on people's walls. So yeah, it's tricky to get into in a sense that like it is quite daunting. When you sort of start them, you're like, oh, it's the same principles, you're just applying them on a larger scale. And I think, you know, the more confidence you build, the more, I guess, you find yourself in that. And all I will say is like, I've been doing them for eight years and I still, you know, there's still not a job that doesn't challenge me or have, present a different like logistical challenge or um, murals are another ball game and they're a roller coaster and some people can't handle like, I guess the, the, the challenges that come with it. And so that's what I say to people, just like be ready for it all. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing I'm really curious about is I see on these like massive cherry pickers and what I'm wanting to know is like, how do you keep the pieces in proportion? Because you're up there, you're so close, but the, f the finished piece looks incredible. Yeah, so cherry pickers, that's another one that like, if you're scared of heights, then murals probably aren't for you. Um, and, and people think I love heights and I literally like, I my legs turn to jelly, like I cannot feel my legs when I'm on those things. So yeah, so there's various methods. You can use a method called scribble grid or lazy grid, um, which is basically at school you would have learned, or if you were, did art classes, perhaps they maybe taught you how to scale up using the grid method, which was like boxes. Um, but you essentially use like, uh, you know, markings, whether that's in color numbers or words to mark up the wall and you basically transparent your design or your image over the, those markings. And then when you're up close, you know, oh, like, okay, that cross in red is where the nose goes. And then you can basically, I just say it's a big puzzle. You can mark it up like that and that's how you can scale up. Um, projector is something that not a lot of artists use, not all artists use, but I, if I can use it, I think, you know, tech's been made for a reason. If it makes your, your life a little bit easier and you enjoy the painting process, then that's um, something that you can use. And then there's also something called pouncing, which is a really, really old school method of paper and there's holes in the paper and you charcoal the wall of the design so yeah and you just put up a, a, a few pieces where it was uh, Mike Tyson and Tupac yeah how long does it take to do a piece like this or these two pieces so those two about a week and a half yeah obviously battling the uh, the fun of the rain and the cold, but yeah, about a week and a half for those two. And when a, a client comes to you, are they like saying, oh, we want Mike Tyson, we want Tupac, or do you have a bit of an input into that as well? well it was funny because the client came to me and they um, they wanted to get some cars. And I said, sort of said, oh, I don't really, you know, paint cars anymore, but what what's the purpose for this images? And they sort of want people to take photos of their cars in front of these doors. And I was like, well, kind of makes sense to have like people because if you're gonna have cars and you're like taking photos of your car in front of a car. So I think that's where I sort of like talk to clients and say like, what's the end goal of, of this piece? And then like, we can sort of work backwards from that. And I say, well, you know, what better than having um, two iconic people who have really paved the way for and will continue to do so for many years to come. And are you quite a big hip hop and sports fan or do you just find yourself being requested a lot to do this type of project? I have become more so, um, like I love all music and but yeah definitely hip hop, R&B, rap. Being asked to paint them I've I guess done a lot of research into their stories, watched a lot of like docos and movies and more so like maybe perhaps not become as obsessed with their um, their music, but more obsessed with their journey and what they mean to people and, and what they've done for society and, and us, like our generations really. So, and Mike Tyson, I mean, like he's just unreal. Like he's an animal. <laughs> <laughs> he is. And what would you say is like the craziest project that someone has asked you to do so far? I've had a lot of people ask me to like paint my own feet for them. So that's like really creepy. Uh, but like, I think, in terms of projects, like they're all, they all present different challenges and I love them all for those various reasons. I think um, the Nike collaboration uh, for the Jordan dedication, dedicated store that I'd just done was really cool because it had um, a few different moving parts. It had a lot of design element to it and sort of, you know, like you've got your t-shirt designs, you've got your fitting rooms, and then you've got a mural. And I think it's really fun seeing like as a col like collectively a whole collection come together and seeing it come to the light. It's just, you know, I've been painting and looking up to Jordan for so long and then to sort of do something like that, it's unreal. That's cool. Yeah. 
If you're enjoying the content on my channel, there's also a good chance you're gonna like my newsletter. It's a free exclusive email that I send on a regular basis, sharing what motivates me through YouTube, podcasts, athletes, hip hop art, and more to help inspire you. I've put the newsletter link below in the description of this video. All right, let's get back into the interview. All right, well, let's get into the business side of yeah. things. You, you're super successful, and there'll be a lot of people watching this, uh, I guess, like wanting to pick your brain. H how much time is spent creating art, and then how much time is spent being a, a businesswoman? I would say 60% being a businesswoman and 40% creating art. And sometimes, like, you know, I go through really crazy periods where I'm only painting and I have no capacity for anything else. But it, for the most part, it, it is, yeah, like a 50-50, but I, I feel like, um, yeah, it's probably 60% business and 40% painting. Now we know that artists aren't famous for being good business people most of the time. Definitely not. <laughs> what advice would you give a young artist that's watching this and is trying to monetize their art? I think I've come to learn that, you know, if you're not good at something, and you need it and it's, it's something that's holding you back from actually growing and, and moving forward in your journey, whatever that may be. You need to put your hand up and, and say, I need help with this and this is not something I'm good at. But there are a lot of artists who perhaps do have the capacity to do more in business and, and can, and I believe can learn it and can be really great creators and business people. Um, so if you are, you know, if you do believe that you are that person, I think the only way to, to learn is to, to do and just immerse yourself in your craft so heavily that you have to be the forefront of your business. And that's when opportunities come where they're, ch like I had to make really de challenging decisions today. I was like ripping my hair out. And that's really the only way to learn is like, okay, what are my morals? Who do I want to be? Um, who am I as a, as a creator? Who am I as a businesswoman? And you sort of find, you marry those two together and you find that happy medium. So as a creator, if you do, like if you are passionate about both sides and you want to, I do believe like you, you, you need to sort of understand your business to then be able to go and like create because you're a part of the whole process. But there are some artists that don't want to and they prefer to literally just create and that's fine too but you need to find the right people who understand you and your craft um, to be able to drive that because if they don't understand your craft and your passion it will end up killing your passion so i don't want to stand here and say everyone's made for business i don't think anyone everyone can lead in business and make those decisions but if you have that in you that you want to learn and you sort of consider it i think it's something worth even even trying and it's not something that you get good at in a year or two years it's something that you know here am i 12 years in to business and i'm still questioning most decisions that i make and questioning who i want to be and how what what are my next steps and i think it's something that um you know being comfortable is definitely the i think it was david cho an artist he said like comfort is the create is the killer of all things it's a killer of creativity it's a killer of moving forward so i get cons i'm worried when i'm not when I'm when I am comfortable so I love being uncomfortable in businesses definitely for that I think so hopefully that's like yeah I, I don't want to I used to sort of say you can do it like you are a businesswoman um you know a man you can do it but I know that some people um crumble and then everything falls beneath them and they aren't be able, they can't create too so I think just re realizing what you're capable of and then making decisions that so does that mean you do everything by yourself or do you have a small team of people how does it work for you for a long time for a solid 10 years i did most things by myself i've had um i have an agent that helps me i have an assistant and i have um various teams that help me for various aspects of my business but that's really only come to fruition and come to light in the last two years so for a long time i did do everything myself and what would you say is the biggest risk that you've taken business wise i'm definitely not uh the biggest risk taker like i know people who are just like you know crazy artists who go and get like the most insanely scaled up studio and and um so i, I wouldn't say i'm the biggest risk taker i definitely make calculated decisions i do believe though like being a creator and how hard it is to crack this industry is like risk taking every day though i, I really do um, i think if you're game enough to put your heart on your sleeve and put your work out there not knowing what the end result is i think that's risk taking in itself i think we've got to give ourselves a bit of credit for that definitely and of course like you know you've got to be talented 
but there's also a big part too where you've got to work hard. So yeah. how much would you say comes down to talent and then how much comes down to hard work? That's a good question because I do believe, I used to think it was 50-50, 50% talent, 50% working hard. However, now I, I'm 70% hard work, 30% talent. I just know that, you know, I look at where my work was and I definitely know that I wasn't born painting like this and I still know that I'm only really, I feel like just touching the sides and only at the beginning of where I can be. So I think if that's, 10 years in the making, I'd love to see where 40 years of hard work gets you to in terms of, that's really everything, like, you know, your imagination side, your creative side, and I feel like I haven't even really opened that that can of worms yet. So, interesting. What do you think? Oh, definitely hard work for yeah. sure. I think you've got to, I would agree, 70, 30 is a good way to put yeah. it. You can be extremely talented, but I always say to people, you can be, when it comes, say, to the sport, as an example, you yeah. can have all the natural ability and, you know, be extremely athletic, but if you're not going to the gym and training every day, the, the guy that's there working harder is going to overtake you eventually. Yeah, I do agree. And that's where, it, you know, you, you've, you've like born with a gift. I believe that gift needs to be turned into an obsession and you have to at least have, you know, they say a 10 year, a 10 year period where you're completely and utterly obsessed that's all you think about i do believe like if you're doing something else you should still be thinking about like what you could be doing and i i, I think if you haven't tapped into that level yet keep going but I, I think you need to be in that period for some to understand it and to understand what it what it takes i think yeah well then if you look at the flip side too right because i'm someone that can get so obsessed with yeah. <laughs> working all the time do you find it hard to take breaks and yeah. go for a holiday and stop thinking about work all the time? Yes, definitely. I think, I mean, I went to Bali and I was on. Like, I don't think, I think um, my friend that I was with, I was like, okay, I'm gonna read my book today. And then she, I didn't realize, but she'd put the timer on her phone and I lasted 45 seconds of like, of just me switching off. And then I was, I was on again, like just talking and like thinking about things and so, I do find it hard to switch off. I think I get to a point where I'm, I need like silence and calm in my mind and I know when that is. But for the most part, I'm, I'm always on and I feel like I'm, it's, I'm, I'm more productive and uh, proactive and I feel like I'm just a better person when I'm busy and when I am on. Like when people are like, oh, you gotta switch off. And I'm like, but that's not fun. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't wanna switch my brain off. So, um, but I also have learned and you know, to set boundaries and I've learned that, you know, you're not a robot and your body does remember what you put it through. Mm. So uh, I, I do know it, as I'm getting older that I don't want to set a precedence in my life where I choose work over everything else that I do. I think you need that balance as well. Yep, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. That's it. While I've been researching you, you've got an extremely impressive resume and you've worked with quite a lot of celebrities, or celebrities have purchased a lot of your work. I'm curious to learn about the story with The Rock. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so he he didn't he didn't purchase anything. I definitely gifted that piece to him. He saw my work. We are talking seven years ago now, and it was back when Instagram was a little bit easier to navigate and sort of get that reach. And he saw it, and basically I did a piece to say thank you for him stopping and recognizing my work and. I was traveling to America anyway, and I went and met him and yeah we've kept in contact since so oh amazing well, yeah. what's the rock like he's probably the nicest and one of the most gracious people and i just yeah like i've ever known really and and i know that he's like probably one of the busiest people i know too and i know if i had a question or, or wanted to ask him something he would always make time whatever you know oh wow that's yeah. incredible or even in a couple of weeks if it takes a couple of weeks he like makes a joke of like how much an asshole he is that he didn't reply like it's hilarious so yeah which I, I you know I you look we look at what we do on a day-to-day -day basis and I always think like oh my god I got so much to do and then I think about someone like him <laughs> he's just yeah unreal so and how much of an impact does that have on your business like when celebrities are associated with your work and having a photo with the rock and all that type of thing does that increase your profile and help sales and let people aware of your brand? 
I think it um not validates you, but I think people, you know, as humans, we naturally when we can recognize someone and and you can associate them with someone else, like you know, they're like, oh, the rock, oh, that's that girl who did that painting for the rock. You know, it stays like fresh in their mind, and and I'm so fine to be like that girl who painted the rock, and you know that Australian girl. Uh, so you know, I'm not sure in terms of like how that converts to to business and sales, but it definitely has helped me on my journey, and um, they've been iconic moments. You know, especially with Arnold, where has been huge moments of reflection for me, and perhaps just that kick or that that motivation that yep, yeah, you're here, like you're, you're doing good you're making an impact because I know people who see that, you know, it is reachable. Anyone can do it. Like I'm just from the Southeast suburbs in Melbourne and you, you, you come across opportunities like that. And I think it's a really good reminder that like you're, that you have no limitations. And if you do have any, that's what you set yourself. So I think um, in terms of that and the meaning behind those pivotal moments, that, that means a lot to me in, in that sense. Um, and yeah, I know people are just like, oh, you met Arnold and you met The Rock. That's really <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. And then most of my friends who were like day one fans of The Rock from wrestling, they're just mad at me because they know I wasn't a day one wrestling fan. So they're like, as if you met him, we should have met him. <laughs> so, yeah. And seeing those doors open up with, you know, these big name celebrities, like, does it ever, I guess, inspire you to move potentially to America or outside of Melbourne? Or is that not of interest here? I... I had this really in-depth conversation with my partner recently and he was like, Dee, maybe you should just do it. And I've definitely thought about it for a long time. In my mind, like I love Australia and I love, uh, I guess, you know, I think we're so, so fortunate with our health system and with our opportunities. I do understand that um, we are quite behind. I'm seeing this like, you know, with the NFT in the crypto space, we sort of just trailing behind and we do take a little bit um, more to adapt and and you know for mass adoption in terms of entertainment and arts and everything we we definitely do lag behind so i have thought about moving there i just feel like in my head and i said it to luke i was like if i was going to do it i, I would have done it already and I, I don't know but never say never honestly never say never i know the opportunity would be insane over there and i i definitely have worked really hard at making those connections and networking and um laying some foundation, so never say never. Another reason why I was really drawn to you and your work through social media was I can see you're really passionate and driven. What keeps you motivated and what inspires you? Being obsessed with my craft was initially my my like my purpose and my drive and my motivation and also also like the challenge of like most people you would speak to would be like, there's absolutely no way you'd make a living out of being an artist. They have that, we have that stigma attached and just even, you know, people who know what I do and know how busy I am still don't understand that I actually charge for my work. <laughs> my work. So I think that was a motivation of like, you know what, this is, uh, this is, I'm gonna make this work and I'm gonna not prove people wrong, but let's just set a precedence that like you actually can make it as an artist. So I think that was the my, my drive and my motivation. And of course, like making my family proud. But now I, my purpose and my drive and what keeps me going is seeing the impact that even if it's one or two people that I can have on uh, artists who, or creators or someone in any field that's, that's for the most part, really, really hard to crack or to, to make um, a living essentially. So I think that it has become my purpose and my drive and just, you know, getting those messages saying, hey, I've, I quit my job after, you know, I spoke to you a couple of years ago and you gave me a few pointers and now it's, you know, my full-time job and, and I've never been happier, et cetera, et cetera. So I think seeing the impact that, you know, just going out there and that's why I like putting my hands up like I'll be a gu guinea pig just jump like jump into the NFT space I have no idea what I'm doing but someone's gonna try it so yeah I'm happy to be that okay so let's get on to NFTs yeah. I'm still wrapping my head around the whole NFT thing I've I've done my research on YouTube and Google and watched all these Gary V videos but I'm still trying to fully understand that space. I know that you're the queen of NFTs. Yeah. So I, mean, I wouldn't say I'm the queen, but yeah. <laughs> well, do, do you want to tell us? I'll uh, try, I'll try have a little, like I've got like a little crown at the moment. <laughs> we'll try and grow that over the years. <laughs> well, you say, do I want to tell? <laughs> I will yeah, explain, I guess, your NFT project and we can kind of work from there. Yeah. 
So I I heard of NFTs. I've been into crypto for four or five years now. So um, again, not really knowing what I was doing in the crypto space when I heard of NFTs. My initial thought was, you know, wrapping my head around an art piece essentially being solely digital. And I was like, oh, this is strange. Like, so you can't actually, the same thing that everyone goes, you can't touch it. It's not a physical item. And then obviously doing some more research into it and even just taking a few steps back and being like, everyone values things differently. So an NFT can be a digital asset, which may be art, it could be music, uh, it could be animation, and it's essentially authenticated on the blockchain. But I think what we've found in this space that it doesn't necessarily have to be digital art. So where I've sort of bridged the gap and where I found it really fun and free and exciting and new and challenging is that I bridged the gap between physical and digital and essentially created NFTs. Um, I've dabbled in animation and I've also been gifting like the physical piece or prints or memorabilia. And um, along with doing all that, I'm building a beautiful community and a really tight knit community at the moment. And I feel like once again, I'm just navigating a new space and you know making the mistakes, making or going through the lessons that I need to learn and um, hopefully am showing or paving the way for other artists and, and that you, you know, you can diversify your business. You don't have to have, you know, just a canvas element of your business or just do murals, you can do everything. So would you say things, I'm curious to hear your response on this, like putting a painting in a gallery is like a dying kind of space? Definitely not, no. I think, I think traditional art will always be. And there's people who, you know, see value in solely investing in physical art. So I, I don't believe that the NFT space will um, eradicate physical and traditional art. I believe it can complement physical and traditional art. Um, and look, as things have changed, like look at our art galleries, we still have our traditional art galleries, but we're now seeing more immersive and interactive art galleries as well. So, you know, like the internet, it's, it's, it always will be, it'll evolve, but you'll, you'll, you'll still have like the core of it there. So is the NFT space something that you could potentially see yourself working on almost like say full time in a couple of years, or is it still just something that is like a bit of a side project? No, that's a great question. I think that's a lot of people's concerns. They're like, oh, so what? Like you're only doing NFTs now. And I'm like, no, it's, that's just like saying to, I don't know, how do you mean? Coles that they're only gonna do like one one line of something. Like you're always, I think for, for me, there's a lot of artists who have solely done NFTs and that's amazing too. But for me, I love going out and, and doing murals. I, I love painting canvases. I love working with various clients. I love connecting with people from all over the world. So right now, if you ask me that question, no, I won't be solely doing NFTs. I will still try and maintain all the other aspects and moving parts of my business. My, that might change. Maybe ask me in five years time and it's something that I, you know, but I'm like, nah, you know what? I'm done with murals. My body can't handle, you know, the 16 hour days anymore. And, and I, you know, I'm open to it. Um, but for now, if you ask me that question, I'd really enjoy the process of doing everything. And that would be something that I, I try to manage. Yeah. No, that's good. It's interesting. So lastly, what, what's coming up for you? What other incredible projects are you working on? Uh, I got a cool one coming up for the Caulfield Cup and that would be fun. And then I've got an important pending commission that I'm just trying to figure out if we can work. Um, that'll take me over to the States. So we'll see, well, not a commission, but yeah, a piece, really special piece. So I won't say too much about that just in case it doesn't come to fruition, but I'm putting it out there that it will. That, and I've got some really cool mural projects that I'm working on some private homes and a couple of beautiful commissions that I've got to, that my clients have probably waited over a year and a half for that I've got to finish and wrap up. And then my next few NFT projects, I'm sort of, tapping into now as well so mm. and lastly I mean you're on all the social media platforms what's the main one that you'd want to direct traffic to oh geez I mean you'd, I'd say Instagram because it is the biggest one but I, I love LinkedIn I love Facebook t TikTok um, Twitter as well so any any of those ones and YouTube I think it's really important especially after speaking to you you've inspired me to 
buckle down on that one. Yep. <laughs> All right, well, Danielle, thanks so much for coming past today. Look forward to watching your journey and seeing where you take me. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.